when you're creating, when you're in your, 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 your dad's basement or wherever you create, do you know when you have a hit? I don't think anybody knows when they have a hit. You can have a feeling. Like, you know, like I've had feelings where I'm like, yo, this feels like it's going to be one of them ones. You know, we talk about this. You know, we think we got one. You know, we like, we got one. You do know that. Yeah, because it, it resonates in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart. Something's different is, is, is happening. Now, you still got to wait to see if the world is going to react to the way you reacted to, to mm-hmm. it. You don't make music for yourself. You make music for everybody else. And But in my moments, I've been able to call a lot of my hits in my moments. You have been. In my, yeah, in my moments for sure. I've, I've definitely been in moments in the studio where it's like, I got another one. I got another one. Like I feel it. Like you feel. Like you feel it differently. It's a certain feeling that takes over you. Again, goes back to what I was saying. You know, it's standing out. You know, it's standing out. You might have did three beats today. You might have did five beats today. You might have did ten beats all week. But there's this one that's that's hitting differently. It's 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 doing something different. Okay. Did you ever make a beat, write a song, and you were like, eh, it's good. It's sellable. But it turned out to be a monster. Oh, yeah! Wow. Um, let me give you one story, and and this is and and it would turn out to be a monster that took me to get out of my own way and mm-hmm. challenge my and challenge myself. I had just got back from London working with the Spice Girls. My first session, and I'm well, I'm, I'm in. I'm, let, me, let me take that over. I'm in London working with the Spice Girls. My last day, they want to go to a club. They take me to a club that night. There's a DJ playing a style called UK Garage, two-step music. Yep. The rhythms, I never heard those rhythms. I'm from South Jersey. I don't know what that is. So when I hear it, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. It's fast. It's moving. It's tempo. People going crazy in the club. So my idea, I'm like, I'm taking this back to the States. So I go up to the DJ and I say, yo, can you make me uh, a CD? of all of the, all of these sounds. I, I love these sounds. And he goes, yeah, he drops the CD off to my spot. I get on the plane, I'm on, I had a walkway on, I'm listening to all of these UK garage sounds and I'm getting super inspired. Like, I'm gonna bring this back to America. This is gonna be my next sound. I'm about to change the game again. I get to America in a session. My first session when I get back is with Destiny's Child. Um, this, We all in the studio and LaShawn Daniels, rest his God rest his soul, he was on the phone with his 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 baby mama at the time, and they were arguing about something. And he said, just say my name. Say my name, there's nobody's there. Say my name. And I was like, yo, get off the phone, Shizzy, get off the phone. That's the song. Let's go, let's go. And, and uh we went in the studio and I cooked up this beat, which was UK Garage. It was very up tempo, very fast, very distracting, a lot going on. It it wasn't that. It wasn't that um, it was genius. It was probably really bad because I wasn't from the UK and I, and I, had, I hadn't um, studied it long enough to understand exactly what they were doing, right? But I thought I did. I mm-hmm. thought it was dope. Mm-hmm. So when Destiny Child walks in to hear the song, they're liking the song, but they're not really reacting to the beat. But they go in the booth and they sing the song. Matthew knows the whole crew, they didn't like the beat. The label, nobody liked the beat. I'm not, I'm like, y'all are tripping. This is gonna change the world. This is a new sound. Da 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 da. This is going and I'm like, yo, they don't even know what this is. They don't even know what this is. This is the next sound. I'm really trying to sell it. Fast forward to this time to mix the song. I'm in the studio with John Marie Horvat, Horvat, the engineer. I walk in to mix the song, he presses play. I listen to it one time down, and I look at John Marie, and I go, yo, this joint is whack. <laughs> he, he said, what? I was like, I don't feel it. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I think I understand what they talk about. Like, this beat is distracting. It's really, it's horrible. And he goes, what do you want to do? I was like, I'm going to go to the Beverly Center. I'll be back in like three or four hours. When I get back, I don't want to hear anything but the, but the vocals. I don't want to hear. I went back to 17-year-old Rodney, the remix Rodney. And I said, let me, let me remix my own joint. And so 
when I walked back in, fresh ears, all I heard was acapella, and then I redid the track. And that track is that track is what you hear today. That track won me the Grammy. That track, that track ended up helping them to sell somewhat like 16 million albums or something. Right? So sometimes you gotta get out your own way to to for something to be successful. I was in my own way, my own feelings in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But then I took a step back and listened to it and also took the advice of people without them even knowing in that moment. It wasn't like I was on the phone with them, but I said, man, too many people said this was wrong. I'm not right this time. I'm not right this time. It's time to redo this. And that and 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 that was that moment, man. And that became one of that became one of my favorite productions, favorite stories of my whole career. Because I know what it was and what it became. You know what I mean? I know what I well, still I love the fact that with. you had humility in that moment to accept that maybe I don't know it all. To, to accept the fact that look, everybody can't be saying the same thing and I'm right. No, sometimes you gotta take a step back and get out of your own way and understand, look, if everybody is telling you that this thing walk like a duck, quack like a duck, and I'm calling it a chicken, nah, by the way, can't be wrong. By the way, it wouldn't have been a single if, if, if I would have left it the way it was. Wow. It was the third single. It was the third single off that record. It wouldn't have been a single with that track. I, 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 I'll stand by that. It would not have been a single. And what you grant it. And if, it, and if it would have been a single, it would have bricked. To this moment, and this is uh, my last question for you. What do you consider your greatest achievement? Maybe we stumbled on it with Michael. Uh, my production, Michael my, 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 my greatest, greatest production of all time is by far my four children. My, two boys, my two boys and two girls. That's my greatest production. Um, when I when I look in their eyes <laughs> and I and I see myself and their mother, that's my greatest production um, because that's the gift that's gonna keep giving. Um, musically, I don't know. I can't tell you that. I don't feel like I've done it yet. To put it like that. I gotta keep going. I still got a long way to go. Do you ever go back and listen to, listen to any of your music? Um. Recently, I've I've been I've been listening to some stuff just because you know people have been talking about verses and the battles and all that stuff. So recently, I went back and like pulled up some stuff just to listen and and and, and you know see. I, I try not I try not to stay in that because mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to ever feel like I'm in a shrine or something. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to keep evolving and you got to keep on thinking about what's next, and that's how you have longevity. So. I'm 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 completely honored and blessed to have the career that I had, but I feel like there's still so much more left in the tank. Yes, and there's there and there's movies to do and there's TV shows to do. It's like Quincy set the bar too high for us to be satisfied. Woo! That's right. Yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.